when they told me I'd had a stroke and pointed out what the consequences of that were, because he said to me, well, it looks like you could be off work for, you know, a couple of years and may not even walk for six months. So I thought, well, you know, <laughs> that's no good. I was pretty determined. I hated the thought of, like, people taking me to the toilet and people driving me around, you know. I wanted that independence back. I wanted to be back in the band, but I knew I wouldn't be able to play guitar and essay because I couldn't, I had no feeling, you know, on this side of my body. And so I set myself goals, and one of them was uh, to get back walking and to get back to work so I could support my family. Um, to drive my car around, so I didn't need anybody to drive me around, and uh, to play guitar in the band, you know. One, two, three, four. <laughs> stroke hit it um, destroyed some of the cells in my brain you know and yeah. they, they told me that um, in order to you know get back to full health you have to relearn what had been destroyed you know so in other words playing guitar I'd have to relearn how to play the guitar and whatever you know read and all this sort of stuff because I'd look at my fingers and I'd go I couldn't actually work out why I was doing things you know on the guitar you know it's, it's sort of it took me a long time to work out while well, I was sliding my fingers up the strings, you know, for instance. Even the concept of music, you know. I didn't understand, you know, why you go from that note to that note. I couldn't understand those things, you know. Like a newborn baby, I suppose, who doesn't realise what things are about. You never can win. Use your mentality. Wake up to reality. But it flooded back, and uh, with a bit of practice, it started to come back. And I've got you under my skin. Got you under my skin. Got you under my skin. I went in and looked at him, and there is a sorry sight. And uh, you know, you know, I thought I'd shake his hand, which was allegedly <laughs> subject to this stroke, and it was terrible. It was like holding onto a some kind of floppy dead fish. I was sort of fossicking around in my mind, what can I do? And in my in my bag, I had some uh, rongo, which is Maori medicine which I'd been given a couple of weeks before in connection with some, some complaint I had on my leg. And I thought, well, maybe if I rub some of this on. So I told Richie what I had, and I told him where I'd got it, and who I got it from, and for what purpose. And I said, uh, do you believe in this stuff? And he said, uh, Rana, I believe in you. He rubbed it into my hands, you know, and it felt really good, you know. It felt so good. He said, is anybody massaging? I said, yeah, the kids and that are doing that. He said, oh, good. He said, well, get them to rub this. <laughs> anyway, I don't think they ever did, but he did. And, uh, you know, oh, I felt really good. And that gave me a, a big lift. And then uh, I said, well, try that, try that fish-like grip of yours again. And he, he came back with a grip which, which was much more substantial for someone who's supposed to be in the throes of a stroke. There's a, a great thing that Maoris use called Waitai, which happens to be my name, Waitai Seawater, you know, and they collect it as the sun is rising and where the sun hits the water early in the morning, you know, and they collect the water there. They do something with it, bless it, and um, they add, I think, olive oil or castor oil to it and they keep it in a sort of... Well, we had some of that and, you know, tried that. Blimey, I mean, good, man. Family support was everything, you know. That, uh, sort of makes you feel, you know, because I didn't know where I was. I was as lost as anybody, you know, you know, what was going on here, you know. With, um, you know, doing things for you, well, you know, they say to me, do you want a cup of tea? I said, no, I can make it myself. So they let me go to it, you know. 
oh, mind you, it's nice to be served, eh? You know, I said, you know, bring on the tea, bring on whatever you want, eh? But they say, they, they say, ha ha, now, now you're playing on it, do it yourself. We'll take you to the toilet. No, 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 I can do that myself. Thank you very much, you know. So all these things, you know, you, I think you've got to go on as uh, try to get back to normal, norm, what is it, normality as quickly as possible and treat, treat things that way. What time are you finished tonight? I think about um, 1.30. Okay. So you can expect me at home about 4.30. You're home at 4.30, you're finished. Well, it takes me a good hour to wind down, another hour to pack up, and another hour to get home from winery. So the dietician in, at the hospital went through what I should be eating and what I shouldn't be eating. So we, as a family, started buying, you know, wholemeal bread and getting rid of sugar and fatty things, you know. And trimming the all the nice bits off the chicken before you don't real hard, you know. But that's that's the answer, you know. If you if you eat all that rubbish, for well, it's got to go somewhere. We all love our pork bones and that, you know. And the fatter the better, man. But it's no good for you. <laughs> I came in here with the occupational therapist uh, just before we were due to start work, and uh, she wanted to have a look at me and see if I could handle the job, you know. Uh, and when I did a couple of things for her and she was pretty satisfied, she went back and told him, yeah, it's okay. I was able to do the job, you know, so, so I came back. I went back to work after, I think it was 18 days after my stroke. And um, as far as the job was going to, concerned, once we had sorted it out with management, that, you know, the job was there and I could take as long as I wanted to recover. One of the other owners, he was really good. He was, you know, we are such good friends. And he said to me, Rich, I don't really care if you're off for six months. He said, we need you as, you know, a real integral part of our company to be here when you're right, you know. And so that gave me confidence, you know, and assurance that at least my job was safe. Because that's what I wanted to be. I wanted to be confident that it was, you know, that I was going to be earning money keep my family and not relying on any handouts from anybody. So I did a lot of my recovery in here. I used to, I had this thing up here which I used to strengthen my arm on. Needed to do that. I, I couldn't do that for months, eh, Scott? Yeah. Put my arm up there. It was so sore, man. But it came right. Even walking to the up the stairs up and stuff. Toilet. Was... Yeah, man. Uh... At work. Also, it was necessary to, you know, use my hand, so I, I got that working all the time. And we had these other little muscle... Um, my son got me the thing that you press, you know, and that was good. I put up a... I bought a, went and bought a gymnasium type of thing, which I used to do about a zillion bloody press-ups a day on it, you know, which was good. So that helped to get the power back, you know, what power there was there before, but, you know, and trying to get back normal. So, yeah, I did that, and... Slowly, as the months went by, I managed to, you know, get these goals and, you know, I, I was able to do anything I wanted to do, go to the toilet, go and wash myself without anybody's help. Dress myself, that was a real mission. Oh, man, especially winter time. Because summertime, right, you just pull on a pair of shorts and that, eh? But as the winter came on, you know, trying to pull up jeans and pull socks on and lace up shoes, man, that used to take me ages. But, um, you know, you find a way. Well, it's one for the money, a two for the show. She is ready now, go, 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 but don't you. Fakama never came into it. In a way, I was sort of proud that I'd had a strike because it gave me a, another sort of challenge eh, to get out of it, you know. If anything, I was more annoyed, you know, that it had happened, you know. Was here I am in the prime of my life, and this this happens, you know. And I thought, genius, man.
probably four months after I had a stroke, my granddaughter was having a birthday and um, I'm normally the guitarist in the house who plays uh, the guitar when we sing happy birthday. And uh, that day I went into my bedroom, I got my guitar and had a tutu round on it. And I realised I could hit three chords. And so when it got to um, lighting the candles and singing happy birthday to her, I said, hang on, hang on, here we go. And I came out and I played the guitar and they were so wrapped. You know, they were so happy, you know, because it, it was it was significant that I was able to do that. Everything that I do, I really, I'm really proud of because every time I play a note, even, I'm so proud of that, especially now after the stroke because um, Nathan, the, the, my son who runs the band, he's, oh, he thinks it's wonderful, you know. He said, well, Dad, I, I, you know, you're not much bloody sax player, but I mean, you know, you're there doing it. You know? saxophone, I used to blow around on that a bit and he said to me, um, this is about th uh, four years ago, he said to me, hey, do you want to join the band? Because they're operating quite a big orchestra, you know? And I said, oh, nah, man, I, I wouldn't be able to play in that band. It's too good. And he said, well, there's some stuff if you want to learn it. So he gave me a whole lot of mini discs and I took them home, practiced for about four months and he said, oh, yeah, sound right, join the band. So that gives me the you know, plenty of work with this hand on the saxophone, you know. And then it changes to the minor. It doesn't go, you know, it's, it just goes on another, another bar, bar or something. I mean, the band we've got is, is probably one of the best bands in the city. And, uh, you know, well, I'm part of that. So I consider that if, if I wasn't up to it, well, I wouldn't be in the band, you know. You'd just uh, phew, shoot me out the door. In that way, it's, it's hard because, you know, me being just an average muser, I've got to sort of keep up with the others. And being an average muser with a, had a stroke. So it's, it's good. It gives me an extra determination. And the doctor said to me, he said, Mr. Whiteye, <laughs> no, I didn't say anything. But he said to me, how are, you, how, is your, how are you performing in that area? And I said, well, <laughs> this is after a month or two, you know. He said, uh, how is, you know, everything? And I said, oh, it's really good, man, really good. Thank you very much. And it was. It was excellent. The joy of even being able to do it was so good. So I suppose that... Also, you know, gave me a bit of extra impetus to... Do people know what I'm talking about? Doctor used to say to me, How are you today, Mr. White Eye? 
I said, I'm good. Every day above ground is good, I can tell you. Don't get me through tonight, yeah.